we are live. I'm just gonna give it just a couple of moments. See who starts mailing into the chat room. I always like to give people a few moments. Okay, and uh, all right. So we're gonna go ahead and get started now. And uh, so awesome to be in this sacred moment of now with two very, very beautiful souls with my dear friend, Chris Monet and my new friend, Nature Boy. So what yeah. I wanna do is to invite everyone to take a nice, deep, centering breath as we enter into this sacred space. Welcome, 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 everyone. So I'd like to welcome here on our feminine chat on January 1st, 2018, we have the illustrious, the wonderful Nature Boy. And I will go ahead and allow him to introduce himself because however, I have heard the name Nature Boy before. I didn't really know a lot about who Nature Boy was or what he represented. I've heard rumors of rumors and didn't really know until last night, I would say probably 10.30 or 11 at night, I get a text message from my dear friend, Chris Monet, who resides in West Virginia, where it's nice and freezing. She's like, you gotta check this guy out. Let's see, I, I can't, you know, she's like, you, you, you need to check him out. He's really deep and he's saying this and that. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, well, you know, he sure is pretty. Oh, oh. She's like, it's not about what he looks like, it's about what he's teaching. And here we are with Nature Boy. Nature Boy, go ahead and introduce yourself. Um, I am I'm a lot of things. I want to first say thank you um, for having me on your show. And, you know, I'm always looking for the opportunity to actually um, be able to give people a better light of who I am and to be understood because I've been um, – misunderstood a lot, you know, and I've been somewhat of a mysterious being. And because of that, people have had no other option but to, you know, insinuate and assume who I am. So, you know, basically I'm somebody that came from the hood, came from nothing. I'm from Harlem, New York. I'm, I was born in poverty, crack baby. Um, born in New York City, um, died when I was young. I'm nobody that, that built me, abused as a child, physically, sexually, um, someone that, that made it through a lot of things in this world and now has reached a awakening state mm -hmm. where um where i understand who i am and what i am and my purpose and i've said some things that has been so powerful to shake other people to make them be like whoa who is this um and i and and, and because of that people where i'm from like me that come from my root chakra um because of self-hate has hated me because they hated themselves they hated themselves and so who i am is just a human example of you know a descendant of slave of slave of a slave that just basically gained knowledge of self that's who i am i'm a descendant of a slave that realized that i was god if I could put it in one, one sentence, that's who I am to me. And I'm here to help my reflections, all those that are like myself or my frequency, who's, who, which is a force that uses our ego or catalyst as a catalyst, our ego, our identifications as catalysts that bring forth 
the healing process of us all becoming in tune in harmony with nature, which is the controlling creative force of the universe. And so I'm a part of that spark, that wake awakening, um, as well as you are, uh, you guys, anybody that thinks like me, we're all a sparking thing to be a tr to make it a trend uh, for for the process of the healing of our humanity, because we can't heal the earth. The earth the earth will swallow us up. We can only heal ourselves before the earth does that. <laughs> so we're here to heal the uh, save the species called humanity from itself. Right on, right on. Yeah, and that's who I am in a nutshell. I'm, I'm, I'm part of that movement. Yeah, yeah, I hear you definitely. Chris, if you'd like to go ahead and chime in. And, and Nature Boy, I'd like to thank you deeply from the bottom of my heart for, uh, you know, uh, being willing to do this. I mean, this is literally like extremely in the moment spontaneous. So I honor you for being willing to Likewise. show us how to live in the moment of now, because now is, is really truly all that we have. And, uh, you know, I, I, I recognize that part of you that says being a descendant of a slave. And I'd like to add to that, you know, you, you mentioned being a descendant of a slave who is now awakened to who you truly are. And I'd like to mm -hmm. add to that descendant of people who knew who they truly were and then were enslaved and that knowledge was lost. And now we are regaining it. I, I, yeah, I mean, I think it like that. I, I, I always, and you know what? I, I always want to say it like this. And I, I say a slave because of what we currently are and what we've been for 500 years. Right, right. And you're absolutely right. We were in tune with the universe. And then because of our own actions created um, our enslavement. And so I just want to take responsibility for it. Right. right. I, I, I just want to, I just want to take responsibility for our actions yeah. and stop yeah. making an external enemy wow. and say, wow. look, man, you know, look, we did this to ourselves and this is because of our own disobedience. We created mutations of ourselves that enslaved us. And and it just and it just is what it is, and it's us. It's up to us to heal it and fix it, rather than blame and point the finger like, oh, white supremacy and all that stuff. I'm not with it. I'm not right, with that. Right and so I, I I brought up some controversial subjects that have given me a name because the way I spoke about it, it's truth. Yeah. And so when people hear truth, you know, there's always cognitive dissonance. So, but you're right. We are the descendants of humanity itself enslaved by itself to come back to being gods and goddess again. Absolutely. Thank you for the correction. Thank you. Thank you for the yeah. correction. Okay, Chris Monet, go ahead, my beloved sister. Enter in. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Nature Boy, a uh, couple of things. When I watched two, I've watched a lot of your videos, but the two main ones, um, one was the Astrology 101, I really have some questions, and I think a lot of people are curious at this time about astrology and whether mm -hmm. you are working. When you say it's critical to know astrology, some people say that astrology is off via tropical uh, a certain degree and like a thousand years off, and that sidereal or what you see on Stellarium is accurate. And so, but then that changes their entire code as you spoke and so we're curious which one of those are we supposed to look at and you said both but how do we do both and i want to thank you too because i i, I shared in a video just a couple of days ago spontaneity is where the real truth comes from it can't mm -hmm. be planned and so this is awesome i can't even believe we're doing this right now but i'm loving it so can you touch on that astrology a little bit for us because several of the subs in Tamu's uh, subscriber list, we're all studying this right now. So I think this is kind of a critical thing. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so um, I I always say use all of the avenues of astrology because none of them are pinpoint accurate. None of them. Um, number one, you have to understand that uh, melanated people, uh, people that have more carbon in them, can see different star systems and study different star systems. That people that have a less frequency of the universe permeating within them, like your like like yourself. And just be honest with you, I'm be straight. I'm not someone that sugarcoat shit. So please let me allow. Allow me to express myself openly without being offended, okay? If you are less melanated or less carbonated, you cannot see certain star constellations, just period, okay? Um, it's because, you know, when you have carbon in your eyes and in your, in your in, in, um, neural melanin, it allows you to receive more light codes than someone that has less of it. So we could see different stars than, than, than anyone can. But even then, we're so messed up. Even melanated people are so messed up and misconstrued. And our melanin is so uh, disconnected or the neurons of our minds have been rewired in such a way to our lower self that we can't even see those stars either at this point. So what we have is this generic version written down version of what we should be able to look up and look at and study the patterns of on paper, on the internet, okay? And so none of it's accurate, none of it's accurate. What you have to do is study all of them at the same time simultaneously, then know, then collect what you know about your own life, the patterns of your own life. If you just look at the patterns of your own life, and then you can, you can all information is within your DNA. All it's called the Akashic Records. And that written in you that brings a whole nother element to astrology as you study yourself. You're gonna be like, whoa, okay. Like, I'll give you an example. Um, what retrograde means as far as what people say it is and what I realized it really was, was something that I learned through studying astrology. Uh, retrograde, they will say that it's a planet that's spinning in the opposite direction. But if you look at the opposite sign of whatever sign is retrograded in your chart, if you look at, if say if your, 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 your Saturn is retrograded, right? And it's in Virgo. If you look at the characteristics of Pisces, you will realize that you have more characteristics of Pisces than Virgo because it's retrograded. And so I figured this out and I was like, wow, that's amazing because that's not written down on the internet. Okay. Within you, it's each other, right? So within us, we are all born with this piece of intuitive information that only you are born with, that only you can share with the world. And the internet is the place where you put that intuitive information on. So the more you get knowledge of yourself, the more you're tapping to that intuitive information and we'll get the real deal, accurate pieces that fill in the puzzles that, of, of astrology that we're actually studying here. But we do get a nice chunk of information with the actually bastardized version of astrology, we do get a lot of chunk of accurate information, but it's not 100% accurate, but it's a start. It's like a spark. Like you spark in your car, it's a jump start. That's what it is. This astrology out here and this information out here that we see on the internet, it's all jump starts to divine information. And so that's how you got to Okay, so I have a, another question. Yeah. Okay. In the astrology video, um, you showed a really, really great um, metaphor or analogy rather for how this is all an illusion. Now, I'm not going to ask you to do the whole thing here again. People can go to your channel and watch that entire video. But would, mm -hmm. you, would you be willing to share just a little bit of how the, the projector versus the, the, the wires that the, the energy comes through to the DVD player to so that people can get an idea of, of when you say it's an illusion and they're like, it's not an illusion, how it really is. Okay. So basically in the video, I basically say that the, your heart 
is your software. That's your software. That's the nucleus. Okay, this is how I explain it very simply. Everything is fractal in the universe. Everything is patterned. It's called the Fibonacci code. Everything is fractal. It's one thing comes into another that comes into another, and everything is, you cannot cre even create anything that is not a design of what you are. So we, when we create a car, the car is just a replica of what the human body is. When we create a computer, the computer is, you can't even create anything in this reality that doesn't rep represent practically what you are. You know what I'm saying? You can only cre recreate yourself. And so it's all different forms of what we are, whether it's a piano, keyboard, um, a microphone. The microphone is a resemblance of the air and so and so and in and, and the vocal. So everything is a replica of what you are. You can't even create anything outside of what you are, because you only can use materials of what you are to make what you are, and everything is fractal. So with that being said, every cell in your body has a nucleus. And we are a whole bunch of cells, and we are made up of a whole bunch of cells and each cell has a nucleus and as a whole bunch of cells put together, we condense into one cell. Even a cell is made up of a whole bunch of cells to make a cell. So at the end of the day, we are walking, living, breathing cells, as Bruce Lipton would say and teach. And with us understanding, that's why we say I love myself, C-E-L-L-F, because we realize that we're a, a, a unit of cells moving at one at, at a condensity as one unit. And so we love ourselves. We say that as a, as a mantra, as a uh, biological reminder and a uh, subconscious message to ourselves to remind ourselves on a subconscious level that we love ourselves in the C-E-L-F. So you are a cell and the nucleus of your cell is your heart. Your heart is the first organ to develop in your body. And this organ basically, um, creates the brain, it creates the arms, the legs, and everything. You're walking, you're, you're made from your nucleus like every other cell, you know what I'm saying? And inside the nucleus, there's an information, which is called your genes, your genetic code. And inside that is the DNA, but your genes are, is the blueprint or the information that tells you what your purpose is, okay? And depending, and, and in those genes is your astrological program. Now this program is in your heart. Your mind is your heart, your soul is in your heart. That's the nucleus of your cell. So the first organ to develop is the heart and the heart pumps itself up to develop a brain and it pumps itself up to develop arms. And so we're all walking around, which is walking hearts, okay? With the intention and now the heart is the software, okay? That's the program running. The brain processes this okay, and computes this and actually projects our reality through our eyes. Our eyes are actually projecting light out that projects off of light that's, that's, that's our subconscious mind, refracting it back to ourselves to make us appear to be in this hologram that we're in, okay? And so the brain plays as a projector machine. So the projector machine has lens, just like your eyes do. If you close your eyes, the program is still running. And even if you're looking at the projection machine, like I told you, even the projection machine is a replica of our own selves that we created. Even to look at the projector machine itself and look at what it's projecting is just light bouncing off of photons to make us receive. But how we perceive this light says everything about our genetic code within the nucleus of our hearts, which is our genes and our astrological programming. And so the brain is the projector. The heart, the brain is the projector in a DVD player. The heart is the CD-ROM in the software, okay? This is the code. This is what you're running. And so the brain and the, the, the heart is giving you the brain, the, and the brain is processing and making everything conscious. And this is what makes everything, you making you conscious of what you are, but really you're a soul that is giving you like your mind is making you think that you that you have a body like your mind makes you think everything is real your mind makes you think that you have a body when actuality and people are like i'm not the body i'm in the body no 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 you are the body the body is an apparatus for the mind 
you are nothing without a body. You are the body. The, 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 the mind uses and creates the body as an apparatus to allow you to manipulate energy within the atmosphere that you're in or in the plane that you're in, which is a plane. And the plane that you're in is actually your mind. So it's it's I try to break it down as simple as possible because I understand it very simply. And so I use the projector and I say, okay, you have the diacephalon, which is the center of your brain, and you have the hypothalamus, which consists of the pituitary gland, the hypothalamus, or you got the diacephalon, which consists of the hypo, um, the uh, diacephalon, consists of the hypothalamus, pituitary, and a pineal gland. These are the uh, intricate crystals that allow light to bounce off to perceive reality or project reality in a way uh, through frequency to give us our, our mind gives us the illusion of reality. Once you understand your genetic program, that is what you need to focus on. That's where astrology comes in. When you can understand your genetic program, then you can tap into the patterns of your nature. Because remember, nature is a whole mathematical equation. It's fractal, right? So when we look out into nature, this is called science. We look out in nature, we see the patterns of life. We're like, wow, okay, this is how we're able to manipulate energy, make these material things and harness them to our will. Um, if we're ever going to become masters of self, we must have knowledge of self. And to have knowledge of self is to actually study our own nature and live in harmony with the our own nature before we live and then you can control yourself when you can control yourself is when you can look out into your projection and realize why it's happening why did you get the mother you had why are you on the path that you had why are these people keep coming in your life what are they showing you these people are not real they're actually like photons refracting in your mind to yourself they're your reflections so therefore this is all your fault this is all you running this is your whole program running you're talking to yourself you're dealing with yourself and until you learn that you're doing this and gain control, can you ever master your reality? Once you're able to master your reality, then you can have a, a strong influence on it and be able to be like, and take full responsibility and become a walking God or goddess. And um, so, it was strong. Yeah. Right on, right on. Can you, can you touch on, um, you were saying also in that video about how the third eye is the heart. The third eye is the, the first, the third eye, it, it's, it's, there's no such thing as a third eye. There's only one eye. The other eyes are just projectors. These are just projectors and receivers of photon light. These are not even considered an eye. I, I, these are projectors to me. There's only one eye that we have, and that's this eye. And this eye is projecting and using the brain to project through these eyes as a, as a, as a hologram, receive the light photons from what we truly are, which is the subconscious, which is running around. It's like in your dream. You know, if I ask you the question, what lights up your dream? And you say, well, you know, uh, I don't know. I guess my mind lights up my dream because I go into darkness every night. But what lights up my dreams? I don't know. What's the light that lights up your dreams? That's your mind. Your mind is giving you a body in that dream, too. You had a body, didn't you? OK, how did you get that body? Did you get did you was you born into from your mother or something? No, I just just started the dream. Yeah, because your mind gave you that body and in, in, in that atmosphere or that plane that you were in, your mind gave you a body within that plane. Why? So that you can manipulate energy within that plane. And that's what we're here to do. We're here to learn how to master and manipulate energy to our will, only to understand our will and submit that to the will of what we truly are, which is God, which is nature which is the controlling force and creative force of the universe, which is you. Okay. okay, so then this brings us right into why you uh, talk so strongly about being close to the equator. Mm -hmm. this, this, because the sun is your mind. That is, that is it. The sun is the, 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 your mind, literally, because through the sun is a portal. The sun is, is actually a converter of dark matter into light. You know, when darkness turns into light, you you know what I'm saying? And then you hit and it hits a prism and that prism bounces into many colors of the color spectrum. Yeah, that 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 is it right there. The closer you get to your mind, the more that you can receive uh, your whole being. You see, like I'm half naked. My light is, I'm in community. The universe is trying to communicate with itself. 
And only we can, through our ignorance, can block or interfere. With this community is you don't know what it's gonna therefore your hair is going to knot up naturally because that's the nature. Without you trying, if you don't touch your hair, it's gonna knot up and, and, and rot up, rock, rot up like this. Why? Because it's trying to be more conducive so that your being can communicate with the universe effectively. And only we can interfere with this process that allows us to be God and then realize and know that we're actually God is to feel. You can't feel it if you don't know it. So we're receivers of light codes and we have to get closer to the light source, which is the sun, the jungle, because we need oxygen. That's another form of light that the trees break down for us, uh, oxygen. And then we need to eat from the earth organically, you know, grow our own food, make sure there's no pesticides on it and stuff like that. Then we need to have rainwater. We, we need to shower in the rain and be one with the jungle so that we can be in complete communication with the universe because we are the universe. This is the only way we will understand and realize that we are God and be able to be of service to anybody else that's trying to seek knowledge of self. And so this is what I've done and I'm in love with it. Wow, that's really deep. Uh, you know, your internet was just a little bit blocked up. You had started, Nature Boy, you had started to talk about the hair. And right before you mentioned about the hair nodding up, there was a little bit of something you were saying, but it was sort of jumbled because of the internet. Do you remember what okay, that so, was? Yeah, so you got um, your hair will, uh, by nature, the, 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 the nature is the will of God. No matter what our will, we have egos, we have our own desires, but God is the controlling creative force of the universe that permeates through everything. So the more we learn how to live in harmony with that, the more that life will become more effortless, more beautiful for us. But so with our hair alone, it wants to coil, it wants to knot up, it wants to nappy, it wants to get nappy. I don't care if you're uh, if you're so-called lighter brown or darker brown, you got straight hair, your hair is going to not eat her up. It does, if you don't touch it by nature, just let it grow naturally and do its own thing. But we've been taught to go against our own nature. And that is getting into community, getting interfering with the communication the universe is trying to have with itself. And so when we become all natural and start to understand the technologies of our body, will we not only get out of the way of ourselves, where we will be more close to what we are, which is God. And so therefore we want to get plenty of sunlight on our hair. I teach about the hair root plexus. The hair root plexus is the, is the, is the nerve at the bottom of the hair follicle that receives light codes and electricity, electrical current from the communication of the sun hitting the hair or natural water hitting the hair, or even your love or people sound and sound and all of these things are received by the hair. The hair is like a plant, it has cuticles, it opens up and closes and receives information. And also, the hair also lets off a pheromone like a plant. Your hair is a plant and it lets off pheromones that, 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 that send out messages of manifestation. We're a manifestation tool. And if we know how to use the human apparatus, if we know how to use our own being to manifest what we want by just focusing our minds and, and attention on something and holding that attention, then, and we have, and we're in our natural environment, there's nothing that we can't manifest. Nothing that we can't manifest because, you know, all is mental, all is mind. And I hope you got the part about the hair because it's very important that the hair is doing its natural thing and that we stay out of the, we stay out of the way of God's will. God is wanting your hair to be knotty and nappy because it's most conducive when it's rotted and coiled and copper-like. And so it can be more conducive as an antenna. Your hair is a certain color for a reason. It's black. If it's black, it's more melanin in it, with more carbon in it, which is actually more of the universe vibrating at a higher frequency of itself. All the colors put together make black or brown. So therefore, you don't want to get in the way of that. You we so I teach about the technologies of the knowledge of our apparatus, which is our human being from flesh and bone, which is a crystal. And we have to charge ourselves with the four elements. We have to get closer to the four elements to be in harmony because the universe, like I said, is trying to communicate with itself. And all we can do is get in the way of that or get out the way. The more we get out the way, the more we'll know more. Period. Elysio, go a little further into uh, what you talked about, how blood comes from the bone, which bone, the blood in the bone is just the crystallized version. 
please? Mm -hmm. Okay, you got water. Water comes in three forms. You got liquid, gas, and solid. Your body is the solid version of light. Your, 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 um, your bones are the solid version of light. And then you have the liquid form, which is your blood of light. L blood is liquid um, light. Most of your blood is water. And the rest of your blood is just uh, antennas, which are red, red blood cells, which carry information throughout the body to tell the body what to do. Um, so basically, you're made up of all this water, and the water is light. And so your, what kind of water you receive in your life uh, determines the frequency that you're, you're actually in communication with of life itself. So when you have chlorine water or uh, pharmaceuticals in your water or, you know, metals in your water. You know, um, through, through each other, which is good. But the greatest way to find ourselves is nature. The greatest way, the greatest, most simplest way is to just live in harmony with that, eat from that, be with that, and then vibrate with, to the frequency of other people. Now, the bones make your blood. The bones make fresh blood. That's how you get fresh blood in your body. But what makes your bones is the elements. You are literally... All of the elements of this atmosphere that you are within your mind, and your bones are actually made from calcium that comes from your thyroid gland. New bone is made from calcium in your throat that comes from your thyroid gland that permeates throughout the body that, that, that you get from sunlight, or you eat food that has that converts that converts sunlight in your body. You eat food that is act, it's just third party. It's all this communication. The plant does photosynthesis, receives it. You eat the plant, the plant gives you the information via through the plant. But we also can absorb more sunlight and light codes through our skin than we can eat in plants because we are vibrating at thousands more higher frequencies than the plant is. So we just get in the sunlight, we can actually receive more light codes this way instead of getting it third party. Anytime we get in our information third party, you're going to have some kind of genetic modification to do it because it has to be processed and converted. And so therefore, if I whisper in your ear and you go around in a circle, by the time we get back around to you, it's going to be something modified. And so therefore, we want to eat more close to the source as far as being in communication with the source. And so our blood is a liquid form of crystals. Our body is a crystal. Your bones are crystals. So we have to Charge ourselves for this effect on your being. You must be living between the tropical cancer and the tropical Capricorn, where your blood is going to be vibrating at more frequency of what you are, so that you can intuitively and tap into that intuitive. Every one of us was born with intuitive information. And so, if you want to tap into that intuitive information that you were born to always give and have, if you, if you never went to school, nobody ever taught you English you would be born with this intuitive information that you came to share as a collective consciousness. We can, sometimes we can't even get to that collective consciousness. That's what we're looking for. Each one of us. I'm looking for our own intuitive. I'm telling you, you're gonna find that, by right? go sleeping in the tent, go outside, Go get closer to the equator. Go, and you're going to tap into that intuitive information that only you have to, sh to share with the collective consciousness. Okay, Eligio, I've got another question. Then, if you'll allow me to just go there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's do it. All right, I got curly hair. It's dark brown, but I am as white mm -hmm. as snow, and there's no melanin to be found in, on the surface of my skin. So, what would you say to me? Absolutely, you have melanin. If you didn't have melanin, you couldn't be breathing or existing. Um, you are a melanated being. Don't ever, don't, don't ever let people say, don't ever, we say melanated because they have a more melanin, right? Well, you have melanin, man. What are you talking about? You, your hair is brown, isn't it? Yes. Yes. That's melanin that's in your hair. Is your eyes black? No. Or brown? No, they're, brown? they're blue. They're like a they're light blue? gray blue. Okay, so let me tell you something. When you look at the color spectrum on a color on a color thing, right? What are the primary colors of all the colors? Red, yellow, and what? Blue and green. 
blue, just blue, red, yellow, and blue. Those are the primary colors, right? Put those colors together, you're gonna get brown. So that, that means we're white light broken up into all of these frequencies. And so the color brown, the more, do you, you see your hair is full of melanin. You're able to build your melanin. Did you hear me? Build melanin. I'm able to lose melanin. You got people bleaching their skin. So I'm able to lose melanin just like Michael Jackson called Vertilago. And you're able to build melanin. Okay. So we as mel so-called melanated people or black people have to first have knowledge of self. Once you have knowledge of self, we can heal the world with love, whose love is understanding. So therefore, you're someone that if you left your hair alone, it's going to do the same thing my hair does. I promise you that. I, I don't know how to explain it to you. It's going to knot right up. It's going to mat up. It's going to knot up. But the process of you understanding what beauty is have been the program that you're running on. That's the misinformation that what I call GMO information that you've been running on. You have genes. Your program has been altered. You have an alter ego. You have your natural ego and then you have an alter ego that your ego, your natural ego is actually living through. So this alter ego is altering and mis, mis, um, giving you uh, genetically modified information that is giving you misinformation on how life works. So your eyes are not tuned to what's true beauty. Your eyes are not, although we know what aesthetically everything is beautiful through aesthetics and lines and shapes and circles and squares and all that. And we have, a, we have a good eye for that, but we do not understand that beauty is natural. We're not in love with nature, our nature. You're not in love with the natural look. Now, if you start looking natural, the people around you are gonna, gonna start backing off of you, literally. They're gonna be like, whoa. And we have this desire because we're pack animals to live with and one with our environment and wanting to be accepted. So it's a hard process, it's a narrow path, right? There's a, it's a narrow path for you to become, to pick up your cross and walk and become real because at the end of the day, very few find this path and very few are able to stay on it because in the process of that, you're gonna look plumb shit crazy. And so everybody around you is gonna be like, yo, you lost your fucking mind, are you? Put you in a crazy house. Let's see, we've got a little bit of technical difficulty, but hopefully he'll be back. You know what I'm saying? They're going to try to get a lot of us. I'm not there. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. There's just some little pauses with the bandwidth, I guess, jamming up. I'm not sure. But go ahead. Yeah, I was. What's the last thing you heard me say? Uh, you said that if, you know, people would think you're losing your mind and put you in the crazy house. <laughs> yeah, like some, you know, some people, they live in an asylum. Like I was saying today in my download, crazy people think you're crazy when you become sane. And so you got to be careful when your hand is in a lion's mouth, you got to pull it out slow. So when you're waking up, you got to be careful how you wake up in front of others because your hand is literally in a lion's mouth and they can put you in a crazy eye. So you got to do it in the conscious way. Like, okay, these people are sick. Let me ease up out of here. You know? Um, so yeah, you, you. He's breaking up again. Yeah. Eligio, um, if you can hear me. Let me tell you something. What are you? Can you hear me? I could definitely hear you. Okay. Can you, you hear call me? It a G yes. You call it GMO information. Um, I call it a cancer consciousness. Um, yeah, that's good. I would, I would love for you to go into why it's so difficult to talk to people that just want to argue the truth. Well, you know, like I said this today, man, uh, I did a video today alive. Can you hear me? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we yeah. can hear you. We were just on mute. Sorry. Okay. I did a live today talking about light capacity. If you understand DNA, DNA chooses genes. Genes have different sizes. Some genes are bigger than other genes. So if you're a big gene, you're someone that has more, you're more of DNA. That means that you're more of God. Let's look at God as DNA. And the gene is a piece of DNA. 
Okay, so we're all pieces of DNA. We're all genes. We're all expression of genetic code, and which called which makes us a protein, right? So let's look at it like that. Some people have a higher capacity for life, consciousness, awareness. They could be they they have the capacity to hold more life. Okay, so you are more of what we all are than them. And so when you try to give people your capacity of light that 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 don't have the capacity. for the light that you have here to lead by example to lead by example because monkey see monkey do we could talk all day talk is cheap you know we got to show it you know our model here in carbonation is uh live it be it let them see it you know what i'm saying because the masses will not be led by your your just your words. The words are for us to wake up to. The words are for the high vibrational, um, high capacity of light beings to wake up to. The actions is for the masses. Does that make sense? Right. Okay. I I do have a question, Nature Boy. Uh, this morning I, I did have uh, the honor to be able to listen to your light capacity. Uh, download, which was really beautiful. And you mentioned something that I found really intriguing. You said that nature is not wild. Do you remember saying that? And if you can expound here on that, it probably touches a little bit on what you were saying earlier. Actually, facts. Um, that There's nothing wild about nature. When, they, when the Bible, they talk about Jesus went to the wilderness, he wasn't talking about going into nature. He's talking about going to the city. We're wild. The city is the wild. That's where he was tempted at, in the wilderness. You're not going to be tempted in nature. You're going to be tempted in the wilderness. The wild was always a place that was untamed. And everything in nature is mathematical in Fibonacci. And I was showing that when you count the petals on something growing out of the ground of a certain kind of plant. If you look at the petals of every flower, every flower is a certain color. And the bee knows exactly where. Everything is mathematical and very organized and in order. Nature is nothing. So, I was, so therefore, we can study the patterns of nature to understand uh, the objective truth. The objective truth is a fact that cannot be denied, and we know that we have facts that cannot be denied because we have observations of patterns within nature that has allowed us to make a computer. You know, this is how we harness energy by understanding the patterns of nature. The only reason why me and you can talk today on this um, outlet that we're using is the simple fact that we understood the patterns within nature and harnessed that and bent it to our will. We alchemized it into our, to do what we wanted it to do. Yeah, okay, that, can we go a little bit back to diet? Every, everything is food. Everything. Everything you observe through your senses is food. You are having intercourse with everything. And that's our problem. We're on this vegan shit, man. It's so much bigger than veganism. You could be a vegan and be in an unhealthy relationship and die of a heart attack. It's so much bigger than, you know, your, your, your fruit smoothie. <laughs> <laughs> you know, energy is, is what we're consuming and, and, and having, it's a sacred energy exchange. You know, we're exchanging energy here, okay? Right now, me and you are having intercourse, communication. Everything is communication. So everything is a consumption. We're consuming through tools that we put in our mouth different. We say, yo, why would I communicate with something in the third party? Eat an animal. That's third party. The animal's eating what I should be eating. That's third party. Very simple. And it's not a complicated thing. But we complicate everything. And it's very simple. Everything is food. Everything is either nutritious for us or malnutritious for us. People are your greatest source of energy. 
We cannot do nothing without each other. We need each other. We learn through each other. That's what we're here to do. We, you couldn't live without me. You couldn't live without your mother. You couldn't live without your father. Someone along the line fed you. You couldn't do it without us. We need each other. We are the greatest source of food that we have. We can build each other up. We can break each other down. Yeah. Chris, do you have any further questions? Oh, uh, yeah. I've got tons of them, but that's because okay. I spent so much time watching his videos. <laughs> the, one, the one thing that he explained that I thought was just incredible was how when you come out of your mother, you're like a cell division, mitosis, my, my, meiosis. Um, mm -hmm. This this is this concept is what I've been trying to share for seven years, and I can't articulate it as well as he does. So, would you mind sharing that here? Okay. So, when when God, what God is, is the the perfect blend between feminine and masculine energy expressing itself in harmony. N nothing came. The feminine did not come before the masculine. The masculine did not come before the feminine. They came together in balance in harmony. This is why when any time masculine and feminine comes to balance, we have creation in any form. Doesn't matter if it's music, anything. When masculine and feminine come together in harmony, you have creation. So when masculine and feminine... ...manifested itself one single cell, just like the cells in your body, they're single cells and they replicate themselves. That's how we used to be. When we were vibrating at our highest frequency, we were hermorphodite. They're very tall beings, okay? They're very tall. You don't know if they're woman or man. They look like a man and a woman together. These are our true ancestors. They're very dark. They're jet black, dark, long locks coming out like tree branches, if you can appear. If they can, they're very slim like the, like the avatar movie they're tall and they're androgynous and when you look at them you don't know if they're male or female i've seen them and we we have genetically modified from them and split in the two male female neither one of them i had to learn this because i was running around telling people that the black woman was god <laughs> yeah i was one of those at one time and i got a rude awakening and visited by thoth Thoth, Tahuti. I got visited by Tahuti and, and, and showed me how they look, where we came from, why males have nipples, all of this stuff. Like she broke it down to me in my dream state, came back like, yo, I gotta tell y'all, son. You know, deep in the jungle, sleeping under, for, you know, on this mountain, way off in the jungle in Costa Rica, I, I, had, an, I had an epiphany. Humbling, humbling epiphany. And I seen them. I know what we came from. They split, they, they mutated into two parts and that's the male and female. That's why we have to come together to create a baby. That's why we have to come together. We didn't have to do that. We did what ourselves do. We just self, -pro we just self created, we were asexual. We were homophonites. And so we have these Gender wars, when we're nothing without each other, we need each other. I'm nothing without a woman, I'm just a piece of a puzzle, look at me. I have a penis, look at you, you have a vagina. We're nothing without each other, we're nothing. Absolutely nothing at all. So when we look at the cell and how it reproduces by itself, now we can understand what supreme beings were, the supreme being, the God, the God, when God came in the human form originally, it was a homorphonite or dike. And that genetically modified itself and split into male and female. I think his... Uh... And I'm back. All right. What did you, what's the last thing I said? <laughs> uh, you said that uh, it split itself. We split. I think that was the last thing. Are you able to hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm seeing something in the chat room that says they, uh, I would like to ask a question about the heart being a third eye. Yeah. I, think I definitely want to have. 
Yeah, I think we did cover that. We we talked about okay. the art. Uh, what I wanted, number one, was to ask you if you would be available sometime again to come back on. Uh, you know, absolutely more to expand. And also, you know, um, th there's a, a, a lot that has been said about you. You know, as I mentioned, I only recently, I guess last night, I actually, I fell asleep listening to your video. So, you know, I listened to you last night and I was like, wow, this is deep. I actually sent your video to my, to my three older sons who are 23, 22, and 18. And, you know, then I spoke again this morning with Chris. And what I wanted to touch on, and I'm sure this is probably something that you want to touch on as well, there's been a lot of negativity put out there about you. And, you know, I feel that, you know, th there's always two sides to every story. And even though there's stories and there's no need to, I guess, go into detail, but I would like for you, if there's anything that you wanted to share, that you wanted to put on the table about yourself. Well, like I said, my, my, my life doesn't belong to me. My life experiences, I, I don't attach myself to those experiences. Um, I, 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 I liken it to a cake and ingredients to the cake. Everybody wants the cake, but nobody likes the ingredients. And I heard this from someone, uh, I want to say Kirk Franklin. He said, yo, you got the egg. Nobody likes the egg by itself. Nobody likes the, ex the vanilla extract by itself. Nobody likes the flour by itself. But everybody, once that is all mixed together, put in the oven for a certain amount of time, and the thing is ready, everybody wants to eat the cake. People are talking about my ingredients. I have went through every thing and been a product of my environment growing from where I grew from in my circumstances. And it hasn't been pretty. And then neither do I make it pretty. I had, I'm glad I went through it. I feel like I'm a well-rounded person because of it. But my, my upbringing and my ingredients, um, I wouldn't take back for the world because I needed all the experiences to become who I am today. And so I'm rough around the edges, okay? I'm gonna tell you right now. Um, so people that have listened to me, that see themselves in me, have different responses to me. Because I'm from, like I told you, I'm a descendant of slaves, of people that were disobedient to God. And what I've become, from where my root is, is where they're at. And I, my lifestyle, the information that I speak, it looks like we got cut off there again. So hopefully he'll be so back. Sorry. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, you said your lifestyle and the information that you speak, and that's where you... My work. lifestyle and the information that I speak rubs everybody in a different way, depending on who the individual is, like yourself. You guys heard the information, you're like, yo, this dude's dope, right? Some people hear the information is like, who the fuck is this? I got to go find out everything about this person. I got to go find out everything. Thing. They can't just take the information and be like, wow, I'm gonna, that's amazing. Let me use that and apply that to my life. They have to idolize me. Instead of just using the information to make themselves greater, they have to idolize me. And in the process, because of self-hate, Kanye West put it best. It's the new real estate of, 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 of our reality. It's the new real estate. It, it runs on itself, self-hate. And because I'm, I'm from a descendant, of slave, of the slave, when they hear me and they see me, they see a hood nigga. They see a nigga from the hood. Out here talking that yim yam, oh, that nigga ain't nothing but a nigga. That nigga ain't shit. He just like us. He, he ain't nothing but a field nigga, which I was a field nigga. I was a field nigga till I became God. But to them, I'm always going to be a field nigga. I ain't nothing but a street nigga. You feel me? We know who you are, nigga. You know you was a stripper. 
We know who the fuck you was. They want to hate me because I'm who I used to be in my evolution and my metamorphosis, my metamorphosis. Some people won't let you be a butterfly. Some people will always hold you to be in a caterpillar when right in front of your face, you right in front of their face, you're a butterfly. Yeah, see, that's profound. Absolutely profound. <laughs> um, I have a question. I, I'm actually going to ask your permission. Would you allow us to mirror some of your most important and vital videos on our channels? Absolutely. I would rather you do that than mirror the hate or the lower self. You know, that would say a lot about who you were. And I appreciate that. And I'm always willing to work with you guys and talk with you guys and, and bounce ideas off, you know? I want to interview y'all. <laughs> you know, Chris, I, I have to say, I really, I appreciate you sending me Nature Boy's video. Uh, I had heard the name probably back in November, maybe late October, back in November. And, you know, the things that I heard when I was like, well, who is this Nature Boy? They weren't the kindest things, you know, it was a lot of negativity. And I was like, okay, well, I don't want that in my life. And then Chris sends me the video last night. And I'm like, whoa, listen to this, listen to this. And I'm sitting here, you know, he's in Belize, I'm in Pennsylvania, but thankfully through the invention of technology, we're able to connect through the ether and see his beautiful face. And I can feel his spirit. And I see humility there. I see love there. And I appreciate it. And I, I will say right now, there is not one of us who has not made mistakes, for lack of a better term. There's not one of us who hasn't had opportunities where we needed to mature and grow and realize, hey, I did X, Y, and Z. And, you know, maybe I don't want to do X, Y, and Z again. I need to course correct and do something different. So any of those so-called haters out there, and I'm just going to say it, you check yourself, look in the mirror. Do you want your skeletons in your closets out for everyone to see? Are you always making the absolute correct and right choices? And Nature Boy said it best, you know, don't idolize him. Take his words and his knowledge that he is sharing. You have your own words and knowledge that you can share. Learn from him. I've learned from him. I've appreciated. I've heard you, Nature Boy, and I see you are a reflection of me. I see in your words and in your eyes something that's helping me to awaken, something that's helped me to remember. You know, we are all in, in this together. Or we could be like crabs in the bucket, constantly trying to tear each other down. And that seems to be what is in vogue and what is, you know, the, the nature of the wild society and civilization. Mm -hmm. So I say, hey, let's cut from there. If there's things that you may not dig about Nature Boy, let that go. But he, he speaks a lot of wisdom. That's all I have to say on the topic. So mm -hmm. I love you. Thank you. I love myself. I, I love you too. I, I just want to say this, that I don't make it easy. My, they say the, the, the bigger the light, the bigger the shadows. Yo, I want to, on in their defense, and on my haters' defense, I have said things that have been misconstrued and sound crazy. Or in their defense, I've lived a life prior to this that was crazy. You understand? I was a prostitute. Like, I was a male gigolo. Like, facts. Like, if you bring that up and you're like, yo, he's not that. But that was what I was. I was also did five years in prison. I was a thug, stone cold thug. I fought people and stabbed people. And I was in gang fights and I was a gang member. Like, We lost that connection. We're gonna get it back. It's gonna be okay. <laughs> Hopefully. Nature Boy, can you hear me? Well, that's okay. It's All safe. of that stuff. <laughs> Yo, can you hear me now? 
I can hear you now. The last All part right, cool. you said before you cut off, you were in you were in a gang, you were in fights. Yeah, I I I I I've robbed people before. I I I've, I've done a lot of things before. I've I tried to be I, I tried to be in, in my sexuality, I tried to be gay. Like I I just was experiencing sexuality, man, and I I and those things I said publicly like, yo, dude, I I'm not gay because I tried to be gay. Like and so like I'm so transparent with my with my with my life and this scares people and they use it against me. Why? Because they um they see, you see, some people have self-hate within themselves, and I give them a reason to exercise those <laughs> demons. I give them a reason to exercise those demons. And so anybody that was ha ha hating or anybody could look at my life from the outside in and see anything that they seen from their perspective of what they are and then made a video exposing themselves of what they are. And so at the end of the day, I get it. I get it. They called me a pedophile because I was talking about the purity of a child. I was talking about how a child doesn't know it's naked until you say it's naked. I said that a child doesn't even know it exists until you tell it it exists. You're the one that tells your child that it has eyes, ears, a nose. The child doesn't even know it exists. And you could say, who are you? And the child would be like, I'm me. It doesn't even know that it exists until you tell it. And this is how we were in before Adam and Eve. Right, Adam and Eve did not know they were naked. They did not know they exist until they ate of the fruit of the the, the, the good, good, good and evil. So we, as we play the serpent, that tempts and gives the our children the forbidden fruit, which is the knowledge of good and evil. So what I was talking about in the video was that when my when I'm naked in front of my son, I don't when he, if he touches my penis, I don't care. Like I don't, I don't act like. Oh, don't touch me or I'm naked in front of my kids and I'm naked. You know what I'm saying? So I don't, and so they, 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 I know how it sounds to the world. And I even had child services come out to my house in, in America where I was there and did the interview with me and investigate me and seen that there was nothing wrong and they let me leave the country. But, and that, and that I'm going to do a video on. But I was, to, he, and even the investigator was like, dude, we knew what you were talking about. We just come out here to do a report for the people. I'm like, all right, cool. So he closed the case, let me get out the country. So at the end of the day, I got my son with me. I'm here. I was already proven um, that I wasn't a pedophile or anything like that. And people took out of content what I was saying. But it gave people a reason to exercise their demons. When they clipped me in that video like that, it gave them. And they want to hate themselves anyway. When they look at me, they look at a part of themselves that they want to hate anyway. It just gives them a reason People love it. People love drama because they're full of it. People that are vibrating at a high frequency, they love knowledge and wisdom because they're full of it. <laughs> People that are on love frequency, they're full of it. They love love. So they, they just like you guys, you guys are full of love. So you love information and knowledge of self. And so you're full of that. And so that's what you attract into your life. And that's the part of me that you receive. You see what I'm saying? Right on. Yeah. And that's why a lot of the times I'll say, <laughs> you know, the people out there that, they're there to show you what you're not. And then there are people out there to, that are there to show you what you are. And so mm. what, what you mag, you know, you're, you, you become magnetically bonded to what you are. And the problem is, is that those people out there that are showing you what you're not, they use truth mixed with lies so that you'll be attracted to the truth. You'll be magnetically bonded to whatever small amount of truth they say, and then you ignore, you go into cognitive dissonance on everything else they say because you resonated with that truth. But then there's other people that are there to show you who you are. And because they have a history that actually made them who they are, you, re you, you respond because you're programmed to respond either offended or hateful or rejecting. Um, it's all a programmed response. And so, yeah, those people are there just to show you what you're not. And everything that I've done in my history that I tell people about is to say, look, this is what I'm not. I was, I was, go I went through all of those things to show me exactly what I'm not. And some people just never learn what they're not. This is Osiris. And thank you for saying that. I'm going to use that. If you don't mind me using that. Some people are here to show you what you are and some people are here to show you what you're not. 
You see that? Yeah, you can use it. I'm, I'm, I'll be using a few of your things too. I'm gonna, I'm gonna shout you out. I'm gonna shout you out when I do it. It's Osiris. Say what's up. Hi, Osiris. Peace reflection. Oh, he's beautiful. <laughs> Peace reflection. Okay. <laughs> say hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. Hi, sweetheart. <laughs> They say hi to move. Hi to move. Hi, sweet <laughs> hi. Oh my goodness, you're so adorable. So adorable. Okay, so I'm thinking maybe we can wrap it up here and maybe uh -huh. in another week or two we can have you on again. I would love to. I love your energy. I I just feel the, the kindness in your heart. And you know, mm -hmm. I, I think that's that's you know that's what it should all be about is that we are all here learning what we need to learn. You know, sometimes we trip, sometimes we fall, sometimes we move the blocks in not quite the right places. But I feel as long as we're on that, that journey, that inward journey to come back out and we learn and we go back in and come back out, that's, that's what it's all about. Yeah, Absolutely. This, this is ultimately how the cancer consciousness on this planet will be healed. Absolutely. Yes, yes. Okay. All right. Well, that's all I have, Tamu. I just want to thank you both so much. This was the most spontaneous thing we've ever done. And yes. as always, those are the best. Thank you so much. I hope you'll come back and talk to us again. Eligio, it was, it was. Oh. It was absolutely good for me. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. I, I'm just glad I was able to vibrate high enough to meet you because I've been through a lot of tests to meet someone so divine. You guys are so divine. And um, it is an honor that you popped up into my reality, that I tapped into you because that shows me in my world that I vibrated high enough to meet somebody like you. And I appreciate to be around and be able to go through the obstacles from where I came from the self-hate that I came from to learn and love myself enough to high enough to vibrate high enough to even manifest the frequency that you guys are on to come to me to even want to interview me. And I'm which is today has been a reward for me for you guys to even reach out to me because you guys are so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So I want to thank all of our people in the chat room here live, all that are going to be watching in a replay, the young men back there on the sofa. Thank nice you also to for being nice here. Nice thank, you. thank you. So if we can take a moment to remember our ancestors and all those who have transitioned before us. So again, I thank all of you. Please like this video. Please share this video. Please subscribe. And uh, there will be more great interviews to come. And thank you very much. And Nature Boy, if you can hold on while I end the recording. One moment. Peace, everyone.